Third day of the Can Yacht Show. I was here for the last two days. Didn't really get any videoing in, so I thought I'd do a quick snapshot around the show today just to show you what's going on. It was a Scorchio day yesterday, but today the clouds have arrived and so is the wind. Some San Lorenzo's here, SD90, an SX, smaller SX, smaller again, SX. That beauty. I think Can White might be one of my favourite places in the south of France. I like it because it's big, there's lots going on, it's very spread out. Monaco, probably, I love Monaco, but you can be there for just a few days and be twiddling your thumbs wondering what else you can do. Whereas Cannes got these two big marinas, the whole town spread you know, between these two marinas of the bay. If you're into boating, you can go over to the Cannes Islands. This looks like a custom line of some sort, but let's get up close and personal. I think I would have tied that around that part of the cleat as well. I do like these SXs. Doesn't that one look tiny compared to that one? Must be the new 100 or whatever they call it. Some azimuts here. You can hear them just lowering that garage. Lovely big boat. It is a custom line. They've been really popular. Uh, this summer, I've seen more custom lines in marinas being used more than anywhere else. It's quite interesting to have the teak coming over there. Ugh. Exhausts. I'm also a fan of those Arcadia boats. They just look so purposeful. I've seen a few of them this summer as well down in Ibiza. Single deck, well, plus the deck below. One main deck if you like, just all the living space out. Oh, there is a little fly bridge on that one. Perhaps not this smaller one there. I walked around behind these boats yesterday. There's some really, really strange designs. Even that looks like a strange design. What's going on there? These poor little boats don't get a looking out the front here. I mean, they're three boats deep from the actual main deck. Um, dock. There's the Pershings behind there. Try deck. I'm not... Yeah, I like the big swim platform, but I'm not a fan of that sort of bulkhead there. I know why they do it, because there's a garage behind it and you don't want to see the ugly garage, but I really like the design where you're on the swim platform and you have all the space in there. I don't know why, it just feels more voluminous and you can use it, take shelter, a bit of shade maybe, that's if you don't have parasols up or whatever. Surprise, this is a showboat and they've got, got the covers on. I know it's a bit gloomy today, but come on. They've just shown this to a potential customer. That's not even in all its glory, guys. Oh, if anyone wants some sales lessons, including you, Mr. Seagull, maybe he's a resting vain salesman. He's got prime spot on the sofas there. Yeah, but surely you would have like put it in all its glory to make it look amazing, right? I mean, hello. So 
those SXs, they are sick pals. It's, it's quite popular now. So we were on a customer's uh, 80 foot princess yesterday. And they're a chopper. And it's single helm. I mean, why not? Because then you get all the main deck forward space, which is where a helm would be. A little jet over there. Here the helicopter, let's see where it pops up. Quite windy to be in a helicopter today. It's 39, five, uh, 35 knots of gusts today. Yesterday, everyone's walking around sweating. And today, especially the French or Europeans are dressed up like it's winter. Any guesses how much this is worth? I wouldn't know either. My guess is 15 million. It's gotta be a hundred something foot. An interesting conversation with a couple of engineers yesterday about how you should leave your boat at night or overnight or for a few days you know should you leave shore power on should you leave the cable plugged in but the breakers on either the breaker here or the breaker or the breaker on the boat and effectively they said leave it all off don't think the batteries are gonna die, which they won't, after three, four, five, six, seven, eight days, just leave everything off, dead ship it as much as you can, because then there, there won't be any surges of electricity from the shore. You haven't got constant power going to certain things. If you've got fridge freezers and stuff, that is a slightly different scenario, because you don't want them off and frosting by accident but if you're not using the boat and it's you're the captain on board and the owner's not going to touch it for six months over winter then defrost everything and leave it all unplugged all right let's keep walking how cool are these i saw these at the in mallorca at the boat show earlier this year it's not one of those, by the way, it's this. <laughs> I was just looking at that because I thought it looked quite cool. It's like a bigger, it's like a bigger Axo par. Still got the rub rail around it. These huge V12s, they're about eight feet tall. That's actually, I'm sure that's a Nimbus. It's got a very, very Nimbus look about it. Anyway, Stratus. Look how cool that looks. Really cool. Playing on the old Dutch built stuff. What's this? 15 meters, two Volvo Penta's IPS. So you've got joysticks and pods. One, one cabin. Mm, one cabin's not very big for a 50 foot. GRP. Fuel tank 2100 times that by two, so it's five, four grand to fill up. Check this out. This small boat, 60 foot, and it's either got a sun pad or a jacuzzi. Because when you are on a boat, you need a jacuzzi because you don't have any water, right? Um, I think these guys need a, need a new designer. I mean, that is ugly. Come on, I mean, they're not known for making very pretty boats, but. These sliding sunroof. Set of French doors. like that the whole range
Holy smokes. Have you seen anything like this? <laughs> Good call this, a double decker bus. Imagine the bathing costs for something so wide. <laughs> That's a crane, isn't it? I've never seen anything like that. I've seen cranes, but not like that. Uh, got to find out what beam this has. Monster. 92 foot catamaran with 12 meter beam. Is that your cup of tea? Crikey, my video camera can't even get it all in. Ladies behind me like it, obviously. That's a bit more me. Very military. I just walked past this and I didn't realise how ugly it is. <laughs> oh, look at the shape of that anchor lock a bit. Oh my God. I tell you, some, some yards. Oh, that bit is pretty cool, I'll give them that. So, say that's the owner's cabin. It's got their own private little balcony. Well, that is pretty cool, but you sacrifice if you want something cool like that, you've got to have something ugly like that. <laughs> on this boat, anyway. Not if you're on a fed ship. Big sun seeker. for a sun seeker. Still don't think sun seeker have nailed the designs of this. It's, I know it's popular, like staggered. Staggered windows. But if you're gonna pick a British brand, um, Princess Yachts, I believe, have Got it right. Let's swing round to Princess. The X range is unique, granted, but the Y range or V range or S range, they look good. And these little blue games are very, very cool as well. San Lorenzo there, there's the custom line that I was at earlier. Bad looking boats, but San Lorenzo's good. Very military looking, but with like tinted glass on the windows and not proper glass looking like that. You know. I'm a fan of these blue games, I would have one of them all day long. I love a little explorer boat, or even a big explorer boat, like the SX San Lorenzo's. These are mini SX San Lorenzo's, same yard now. But when I was in Cannes last, no, Palmer last year, I went on this little one, it was probably one that size, and the guy said it's, before COVID, they were six, seven hundred grand, and since COVID, they're over a million. Believe it, these shipyards have put all their prices up just because people were spending money during COVID and now they're not spending money. I bet they haven't put them all down again. My
the weird one I was talking about. Very interesting, curvy design. It does have folding side panels as well. What do you think?